welcome back again to another UML tutorial. And in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to model a interface in a class diagram in Papyrus. So for that let's first create a new project. So Papyrus project. And then key in the name, so that would be uh, interface example. I want to use UML as my diagram language. Choose class diagram, and I'm gonna call it interface example. So let's wait for the project creation to complete. Okay, so there we go. So first thing, I like to rename this model. So rename. And there we go. Okay, since I want to create a Java model, let's take care of the imports. Okay, there we go. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class. And I'm going to name this class, uh, for example, Calculator. Okay, so a interface is essentially a contract that is uh, used to force a class to implement certain methods. So, what I'm going to show in this demonstration is how to define an interface that needs to be implemented by Calculator. And thus the interface will define several methods that will be forcibly implemented by Calculator. So let's first convert Calculator into a Java class. As we should. Okay, now let's create the interface. So the interface will be dragged to here. And I'm going to name this interface Math Operations. Okay, so there we go. So how do you connect a calculator and an interface? For that you use the interface realization. So we click on that, we click on class, and we click on the interface. So there we go, now we indicate that this class is implementing this interface. So let's create some uh, operations. Uh, as a matter of fact, I intend to create uh, three of them. Okay, first thing, I'll just make sure that they are Java operations. Okay, then, well, the name of the operation, add two numbers. So this operation will be public. We'll have two parameters. So the first parameter will be named num1, which will be an input parameter of the type integer. And the second parameter will be num2, also of the type integer. So let's just position the relationship a bit more tidy, tidy so it's a bit more clear. Okay, for the second operation, I will create an overloaded version of add to numbers. So add to numbers. And the first parameter will also be named num1, but has the data type double. And num2, which also has the data type double. Okay, lastly, I'm going to create a method called uh, multiply three numbers. Okay, and naturally three input parameters. So the first one, num1, which will be named a integer, which will have the integer data type. 
uh, num2, which is also an integer. And last one, you can probably guess, will also be an integer, because it makes for a nice and easy calculation. Okay, so we have an interface here with three operations, and I have an empty class in this case, because uh, just to make it clear how the code uh, responds to having an interface attached to it, I'm not going to define anything here. Okay, so let's create some Java code. Okay, there we go. So inside my model project, I now have uh, two files, calculator.java and mathoperations.java. Calculator.java being the class and math operations being the interface. So let's first take a look at the interface code. So I'm just going to delete those comments just for readability. So essentially what we have here is a file that is not named public class, like the class, because it's an interface, not a class, named public interface math operations. And inside this interface, there are three definitions of methods. As you can see, there are definitions, not implementations. So an interface is, like I said, a contract, and therefore the methods defined in there cannot have an implementation. Unlike the abstract class, which is actually allowed to have either methods that are implemented or abstract methods uh, that are just defined and not implemented. So if I go to the calculator.java file, and let's again delete the comments just to make the code more readable. And format properly for a moment. There we go. So as you can see, it says public class calculator implements math operations, indicating that this class will be implementing the math operations interface. And then basically all the methods that were defined in the interface are here shown as full-blown class, uh, class method skeletons, so leaving you to do the implementation. So please note that it says implements math operations, where the abstract class, which has similar functionality, who can potentially have similar functionality, is using the extends keyword. This is because an abstract class is inherited from, while an interface cannot be inherited from, but simply has to be implemented. Okay, so to come full circle, let's just uh, implement these methods. So, very simple. There we go. Same thing for here. And the last one is a bit of an exceptional case. So that's num1 times num2 times num3. So there you go. And basically you can put any type of method inside uh, your interface. In my case I just stuck with multiple methods with different parameters and all of void return type. I could have easily given it a double return type or anything that I like. So, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So, model your interface, generate your code, implement your class. Alright, that's all for today. See you next time. Mm -hmm.